and hello and welcome to Alex Cadex Sandbox MTG Studies Session 113 or 113. Uh, my name is Alex and uh, today we will continue to study vintage stats as per usual on uh, Tuesdays. Uh, at least for now we are studying vintage sets and a little bit later of course we're going to continue in a different type of set. So for now we're studying Alphabet Unlimited. Uh, e like still it's uh, it's pretty slow it's, it's, it's going super slow because again uh, this is kind of the first step there is a lot of kind of um, I don't know different texts in here that we need to redescribe in a different way so it's kind of a little bit like I don't know, super confused <clears throat> or at least I'm feeling confused when I'm reading some of those because they are described in an old way uh, or described in a normal way but not necessarily like make sense sometimes from the get-go yeah so uh, let's continue so the last card that we stopped with uh, was a red word so the cool thing is that hopefully today we're going to finish the whole page so uh, like we have an hour to study MTG that way and the second hour of course as usual we're going to play Magic Arena and it's going to be a singleton time hopefully not the last time that we're going to play singleton but might be the case because uh, this Friday they promised an update, not necessarily promised, they t told us that there's going to be an update possibly, if nothing is going to change. So, and if actually it's nothing going to change, then of course we're going to go uh, kind of see a new update. And with this update they completely restructured, uh, they will restructure the uh, the event uh, portion of the game, events portion, portion of the game, and it might change uh, by... We could lose Singleton. No, I don't want to lose it. So either way, uh, we're going to get to this in an hour. So for now, let's just go and continue to study. Uh, today my voice is pretty crazy, so I'm going to be sometimes like super annoying uh, in terms of the voice because when my voice is tired, it goes into the annoying kind of register sometimes, uh, or at least personally, I consider it annoying. Maybe not for others. So either way. Go. So, red word. Uh, this is enchantment. Uh, regular enchantment. The enchant creature has protection from red. Uh, this effect doesn't remove word. Again, uh, one of the reasons why we are studying this first set of magic for so long because there's so many additional text that not necessarily make sense fr right from the get go. The reason is because most of these texts were kind of an explanation of the rules before the rules themselves w was established, I believe. And because of this, we kind of have this thing. So, for instance, now nowadays we know that if Enchanted Creature has protection from red, this effect doesn't remove this card if this card has the same color. But we still have this weird explanation, which I can only describe as a general rule of thumb for magic before the rules was, were written. I guess in a big rule book uh, because again at the beginning when game is created uh, I guess there's no big set of rules yet usually uh, and uh, you kind of establish the rules by adding some portion of these rules into the cards to specify how it actually works um, uh, in certain situations since you can't add too many rules in one text you're going to specify each uh, rule based on the what card of course is doing and that way in each card that has a similar ability like certain ability uh, you're going to describe a different portion of the rules um, and that way in the end rules will be established some of the rules will be established only after playing the game so especially like uh, when we're going to create our own games it's going to be pretty interesting to kind of um, get to this point where okay i'm established all rule I, I established all the rules that i possibly could now let's just play play study it and now we go into the play testing and after play testing we're trying to we're starting to figure out that most of the rules are yeah work uh, work 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 fine but there's a lot of new things that doesn't work and we need to kind of think about okay we need to change something. We need to adapt this new situation and create a rule for this situation. And this is kind of one of those cards, I guess. Uh, but again, uh, I'm just talking in general. I uh, not necessarily like considered about this one uh, ability. Like this effect doesn't remove red board. Again, um, 
If this card would be a protection from white, then I completely understand this description. But I'm not necessarily understand why this description in here when we have red, because if you're going to put a white enchantment that puts protection from red on a creature, it's not going to remove this red word from this card because it's freaking white. Uh, maybe it's kind of a thing, interesting, I, I don't know, maybe, ah, oh, I guess it, it works with the name, because we have red word here, and since it's protection from red, it kind of specified that it's not going to remove red word because the protection from the word red, it's kind of a joke, I guess. <laughs> Either way, uh, regardless of uh, the fact if this is a joke or not, it's an interesting thing. I guess we go, uh, yeah, I guess we could go back and look at cert, like uh, in a previous page and see if we had uh, the actual names for those cards. Okay. <coughs> Let's just do that. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Sorry about that. Yeah, mm, go. So yeah, let's just try to find the enchantment of the similar name that does the same thing, like gives protection from certain color, because I kind of interesting if, if this uh, enchantment actually has the same type of name, then this ability, th this specification is completely explained. If not, yeah. By the way, we need to check the sound. And then this ability, th this specification is completely explained. If it's working! Good. So, blah, 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 blah. so Juggernaut, we, we remember Juggernaut. No, 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 good, good, good. It was somewhere, like, yeah, I remember it where, it, it was somewhere the here, so. Enchantment, okay, it's it's an aura. And become stop, no. We're going to search for a enchantment aura. I'm going to pretty quickly scroll. So hopefully it's not going to annoy you. Uh, just a little field, just a basic land enchantment, nope. Okay, we already covered all of these abilities, the only thing that we're searching, we're searching for a specific type of name uh, for the card to figure out how ability, how description of the ability, additional description actually works. Because I kind of found a new cool stuff that I need to check, so oh, wait a second. Seriously? Let's first strike and jump land. We definitely had the similar card. Like 100 percent sure. Because the first time that I established this type of description, I was kinda what? Why would you put this description here? So it's definitely somewhere here. Just need to find it. Since I don't remember the name, we need to find it that way. So this is enchantment hour definitely, and it gives a protection from a certain color and the specification with the text tells us that it's not going to remove, oh yeah, here it is, green word, protection from green, yep, this effect doesn't remove green word. So yeah, basically the only reason why this text is, text is actually here, it's kind of since this named green word, it, it kind of, uh, to make sure that we're not going to think about the protection from green as the protection from the green name not necessarily like yeah so protection from green means the name itself so i guess this is the reason why Whew, good so that means that i didn't miss anything good continuing so yeah the next one enchant creature again another aura uh, this is regular enchant creature regenerate enchanted creature again uh, we already covered regenerate so we're not going to cover it anymore um, the cool thing about regenerate though again at the beginning I didn't know how regenerate like worked uh, I remember I remember when when the f when I first started magic uh, playing magic uh, regenerate for me was pretty confusing. I didn't know why creature is tapping after it's getting destroyed, but again, this is the thing with regenerate. The next time this creature would be destroyed this turn, it isn't. Instead, tap it, remove all damage from it, and remove it from combat. Regenerate is one of those abilities that actually kind of creates a pretty interesting combination. So this mechanic is basically created uh, from undestructibility, 
but not necessarily has an undestructed ability. And remove it from combat, but if this card is going to be killed the second time, I believe it will be killed, so you can't regenerate it until the end of the turn. Regeneration works only on one spell, so it's kind of an interesting thing, so I mean if we would create, if we would create our own mechanic uh, and make it similar to regenerate, uh, then we could kind of take a certain ability, like exiling creature or whatever, and uh, make something and add something that could not necessarily 100% exile the creature, but exile it with a certain instead of exiling it force this creature to behave in a different way so for instance right here tap a creature or whatever uh, we could create a ability that when you try to destroy a card or when you try to remove card from the game instead it basically shuffles into the player's library or whatever so something like this um, so that's where I see potential in regenerate and its complexity. Although it seems pretty simple, but again, the additional of this, like, it isn't, and instead it taps and removes all damage from it and removes it from the combat, so it's kind of multiple actions or things that usually creature able to perform in terms of the action. So return target creature from gear radiard to your hand, it's simple sorcery, okay, keeping um, return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield, regular returner. Uh, but it kind of returns right away into the battlefield. Uh, I don't remember if we had like return Let's just try to search for it It's not something that I would put up. Return target permanent to its owner's hand we have We have you have the ability to return cards from your graveyard or opponent's graveyard Okay, let's add the specification in here so you have the ability to return target card from your graveyard or your opponent's graveyard but there's no specification where exactly you will return it like to oh, keyboard closer to your hand slash opponent's hand um, and the second is uh, to the battlefield To the, battle, to the battlefield and since we're kind of able to choose either our part of the battlefield or the opponent's part of the battlefield, we could specify on your or opponent's side. Under your. Slash opponent's control. And it's super important because uh, we remember uh, a lot of abilities in Magic that allow us to basically return target cards from the opponent's graveyard into under our control. Or just help our opponent to return card from the graveyard, from his graveyard, or from our graveyard to his or her control. Which seems weird, why would we do that? But if we have a card who, that basically poisonous or whatever for instance like let's assume then it's awesome thing to do so for instance we have a lot of poisonous cards in our graveyard and then we have the possibility to bring those cards from our own graveyard and put it into the opponent's battlefield it into the opponent's part of the battlefield and that way it, when these cards are under opponent's control he or she will be will lose something each turn because this card is poisonous and it's under opponent's control so for instance like how we could look at this yeah to the battlefield under your or for opponent's control continuing so okay mm. so the next time source of your choice will deal damage to you this turn prevent that damage you gain life equal to the damage prevented that way uh, this way we already covered something similar um the next time a source of your choice, of my choice, would deal damage to you this turn. So I'm choosing the source that tries to deal damage to me. Yeah. We're preventing them damage and we're gaining life equal to the damage prevented this way. Pretty sick card. I mean, 
it's actually pretty sick. Yeah, we're not going to cover necessarily that, so it basically works with preventing damage and then turning that damage that we prevented into life. Uh, so, it's just combination of life gain and damage prevention. And we're, we're going to work with those combinations once we will go through the first draft, maybe through the second draft, and then we're going to establish how many combinations are actually possible. Uh, I doubt that we're going to cover all possible combinations because there are a limitless amount of them. The more abilities magic has and the more possibilities magic has, and not only magic but the game has, the more unique and in like interactions between those possibilities could be. It's all about math, I guess. There's a lot of math. Uh, you could mathematically, by the way, I guess, establish this if you will take like 273 uh, different mechanics and uh, I don't know. Perform a lot of calculations with math. I'm not that good at English uh, mathematical uh, terminologies. I remember division, multiplying, equal, uh, the rest I'm kind of forgetting. I don't remember the X one. Like, ugh, I don't remember. I could actually check this out, why not? Let's do that! Divide. I definitely remember it, but... Multiply. Oh, multiply. It is. So, yep, multiply. And multiply. Yeah, take this big number and basically multiply it on another big number, and then you will get the amount of possibilities that could go there. Um, since we're not going to be able to establish each of them, we might use mathematics later which I not necessarily love, uh, which is a weird thing, I always hated mathematics, I mean, right from the from the school, uh, mathematics were, it, it was pretty hard for me personally, it, even sometimes nowadays it's pretty hard, one of the reasons why I'm playing magic to kind of learn how to count <laughs> better, I don't know, because like I skipped a lot of things in school in terms of math, and uh, now I'm getting into magic to become better at things that I skipped in school because I was lazy at that time. Um, and look at me now, I'm complete opposite of being lazy. This is weird, how people change, like truly. I was so freaking lazy, you can't even imagine how lazy I was. And now I'm, I never lazy, I mean... I always kind of doing something and I can't just sit and not do anything even if I'm watching something by relaxing I always want to do any, like something in addition to watching something or I don't know it's weird like it's it's like the previous me was completely shifted into the oh we're in another realm uh, or we're in another universe or dimension whatever it's weird yeah let's stop with weird terminal uh, analogies yeah Target blocking creature uh, gets plus seven plus seven until end of the turn. This is pr what? This is pretty big plus like buff. I mean, this creature gets plus seven pl gives creature plus seven plus seven. But the only thing it works only on blocking creature, so that means that blocking. So blocked or blocking. So blocking creature could be the one that opponent is blocking your creatures with, or which stupid thing to do to put this amount on the opponent's creature uh, but when you block it it's actually awesome I actually remember this card it seems like uh, yeah it's super familiar it was an M10 oh I have it actually yep I have a lot of copies of this card I remember it yeah that's like I re usually I remember card by their uh, abilities not their names and I remember them by art so two things that I that helped me to remember cards uh, from the early days is the art and the ability itself. And this is why for me it's pretty hard to play magic because I'm kind of a visual slash text person uh, in terms of like the ability itself. I'm not paying attention to the names usually, which is the downfall because it's harder for me to relate with other people and talk with other people about magic because the, the the way that you usually speak 
about certain abilities and cards is by mentioning their names, not their abilities, because ability, abilities are usually sometimes similar in different cards. Okay, a regular creature with flying. If I'm going to continue to talk this way, we're never going to go through even half of the page. Uh, yeah, I guess we're going to at least go there in terms of the how many things we're going to cover today. The next week we're probably going to go into the middle. Yeah, about 25% today, maybe like 50 next week, 75 and whatever. So yeah, we're not going to finish this set any soon in this month, maybe even next month, which is a weird thing. Yeah, the next month, uh, by the way, I'm uh, launching a lot of new things. September is going to be a pretty big month in terms of how many things I'm going to launch. Uh, right now I'm kind of super excited about those, but at the same time I'm a little bit stressed about it because there's a lot of things that I need to do and I don't have enough time to do that. So it's kind of... yeah. Okay, blah blah. Uh, Hydra, oh, oh usually all Hydras are 0-0 zero, zero, and then they will get plus 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 one plus one counters equals to something. Uh, so enters the battlefield with plus one plus one counters on it, X. Uh, so you can pay additional X counters and it enters. Yeah, for each one damage that would be dealt to Rock Hydra, if it has a plus one plus one counter on it, remove a plus one plus one counter from it and prevent that damage. Uh, oh, okay. yeah, I remember something similar. It's like. The, Either this Hydra is super similar to the other Hydra that were presented in later sets. As we can see, it's not in older sets, but I definitely remember this type of Hydra. It's definitely not new. I mean, again, Hydras are, work pretty similar to each other in terms of the mechanics. They constantly work with plus one plus one counters, and um, there are some counters like, like each turn you will multiply the amount of counters, each time the damage is dealt you will remove counter, and something will happen or whatever. So instead of, like for instance, each damage that would be dealt to a Hydra is dealt by removing plus one plus one counters from it. Something like this, instead of just doing the actual damage. Which seems weird because... What if Hydra doesn't have base toughness, power and toughness? Then it's kind of the same. But if, if Hydra has a basic power and toughness, the base power and toughness, like a creature for 4 or 3 3, then every damage that is going to be dealt to her beyond removing plus 1 plus 1 counter is not going to be dealt. Interesting. Um, either way. So, yeah, uh, yeah, we're not going to cover it. There's just a lot of multiple combinations of already existing abilities, so dealing damage. If Hydra has at least plus one plus one, one plus one plus one counter on it, you will remove this counter from it and prevent that one damage. For each damage, basically, you have to remove plus one counter. So, yeah, kind of an interesting thing. So, prevent the next one damage, so you can do that. Uh, with additional pay uh, and put plus one plus one counter on Hydra. Yep, the same way with additional pay. Yeah, we're not going to cover it, there's just a lot of multiple possibilities, and Hydra are pretty, like, the Hydras are pretty interesting in terms of what they're doing with counters. It could become pretty, kind of, confusing at some point. Um, Rod of Ruin deals 1 damage to any target, again, regular artifact that you pay 3 and tap and deal damage. Did we actually back on the third page? Yep. It, because it, it seems like something... <gasps> Ooh, I have this card! <laughs> Cover it, but still, I remember the art. I actually have this card from this set from Time Spiral Time Shifter. Okay, continuing. Um, destroy target topped creature again allows us to destroy topped creature. Uh, again, it's a regular destroyer, but but the only difference with this destroyer that not make it makes it necessarily regular that creature has to be tapped. So we could add the same like destroy target attacking creature, blocking creature, whatever. So it all goes into one big category. Okay. It's pretty cool. <laughs> um sacrifice, of course. And uh, as an additional cost to cast this spell, sacrifice a creature, add an amount of 
swamps equal to the sacrifice creatures converting mana cost. Yeah, we already covered it. I mean, uh, this is the first time that we actually seen this thing in a card, uh, in, in, in an actual card, but we already covered this way. Like, uh, when we sacrifice a creature, we could add the amount of mana equal to the converted mana cost or whatever. We already covered and we already talked about this possibility, so we're not going to cover that. We prevent the next one damage that would be dealt to any target this turn. Again, damage preventer, just a regular land, regular cat. Snap, this cat is pretty weird. Um, it's not a cat, it's lion. And so, regular zombie to two. Uh, okay, at the beginning of each end step, put a corpse counter on scavenging ghoul. ghoul. For each creature that died this turn, remove a corpse. Uh, yeah, wait a minute. At the beginning of each end step, put a cor corpse counter on scavenging rule for each creature that died this turn. Yeah, we already we already had something similar. So similar. So basically, for each creature that died this turn, you will get an additional corpse counter. So remove a corpse counter from scavenging rule. Uh, regenerate scavenging rule. So basically, it kind of allows us to regenerate it. Okay, it's interesting. I don't know, like, should we actually put it here, like, in, in, like, as an additional thing or not? It seems like a necessary thing to do. Remove corpse counter from scavenging ghoul. Regenerate scavenging ghoul. Ghoul. Yeah. I don't think that we need to put it again. Everything that works with putting different type of counters on creatures or artifacts, it's just a different means to use a uh, counters. It's not necessarily something like super mega important. Um, and of course, right here we're putting counters equal to the creatures that died this turn. Um, the only thing that I would add though is you're going to get something equal to the each creature equal for an each creature that died this turn. This is something that we actually could add as a recurring ability with frequently used abilities. Because I remember magic actually has a lot of things like this, and this is something that we didn't necessarily point it out yet. So you will get something for oh come on freaking language you will get something for each creature that died this turn you or your creatures uh, creatures creatures will get something for each creature that died this turn um yeah, this is something that kind of, like, I guess, pretty interesting. Uh, for creatures that died this turn. Um, we could change this ability and, as a specification, add... Uh, uh, for each creature that died this turn, we could change... Can be... Um, could be. Could be uh, anything. Uh, what I mean by this, it's basically we could choose for each creature died this turn, for each card that opponent drew, for each card that you draw, uh, for each card that were put from anywhere to the graveyard. So it's basically everything that has some type of a counter on it I mean like the count element on it so for instance five creatures seven creatures eight creatures or five cards seven cards nine cards whatever so basically everything that has to be like everything that can be measured could be anything that can be measured masuret ma oh come on masuret yep measured that can be measured. Goodish. Um, uh, yeah, so continuing. And uh, again, I'm not going to put the corpse counter because it's just a, another type of counter and you could create infinite amount of counters in terms of the names. You could 
You could create your counters and name them like, I don't know, a spore counters, we already have those. Uh, we could create a glove counters, or we could create a stylus counters, or whatever, depends on what type of game we're creating. We could create a button counter, we could create a phone counter, I don't know, the headphones counter, the... Oh, I have a tea. I completely forgot the, uh, about the fact that I actually have a tea that I forgot to drink. <coughs> yeah, continue. Okay, flying creatures, so sea serpent can't attack unless defending player controls an island. Uh, when you control no islands, sacrifice this one. So again, we have a certain kind of a thing that, okay, we can't sacrifice this creature. Uh, no, wait a minute. Sea Serpent can't attack unless defending player controls an island. Um, so, again, it just creates a certain amount of... Not necessarily restrictions, but... I forgot the word. Come on. Uh, so, we have to meet certain conditions. Yeah, we have to meet certain conditions in order for this creature to act a certain way. We already covered a lot of things like this. So, everything that works with the conditioning... Uh, it's going to be a completely separate, a completely separate um, kind of, not necessarily ability, but completely separate category for us. Like everything that works with uh, like circumstances or conditions, like the condition-based, circumstance-based, and etc. Um, we're going to create uh, a separate thing for it. But for now, let's just like skip it. Um, when you control a no islands, of course, you will sacrifice it again. If something is not like there, you will sacrifice it. Okay, troll, uh, siege troll. Uh, okay, gets plus one plus one as long as you control swamp. Again, as long as something is there, it gets plus one plus one. Um, flying, uh, yeah, it's a regular flying. Whenever a creature dealt damage by this vampire, this turn dies. Damage by this vampire this turn dies. Put a plus one plus one counter on this vampire. Oh, almost all vampires work this way. They kind of leech off uh, some someone in a different type of way. Uh, this is one of the ways how we could look at uh, future abilities. Like for instance, if we're going to create a, like like our own abilities, we could look at them from the creature type standpoint. So if we're going to create a for instance. Mm, like everything that vampire can do we can turn into ability everything that um, I don't know a red can do we can turn into ability uh, anything that I don't know a pan can do we can turn into ability <laughs> so everything that mouse can do you can turn it into ability so, this is kind of a thing. Um, oh, mouse red. Haha, <laughs> that was funny. Not uh, at all. Flying, vigilance, angel, whatever. Continuing, forest walk. Nope, skipping. Already covered all type of walks. Destroy target artifact. Another destroyer. Flying, gets buff. Uh, you gain life equal to the damage uh, dealt to you this turn. Again, turns the damage de dealt to you into something new into life or into like the amount of draws that you get to get from the top of your library for instance the you will draw cards equal to the damage dealt to you this turn or you will draw cards equal to the life lost this turn or whatever or this creature gets plus one plus one counter equals to the life lost uh, or if you lost life this turn this creature gets plus one plus one counter or whatever um, it deals damage to target creature you control equal to the damage that dealt to you this turn. Again, similar, just like bloop, bloop, they turn upside down. Um, deals damage to target creature you control equal to the damage dealt to you this turn. Oh, it's an instant. Yeah, pretty cool. So uh, it's like, wait a minute. If it's a creature, how it works though? But yeah, if it's an instant, it works. Yeah. 
Uh, destroy target land, okay, so cast the spell during only an opponent's turn. Okay, another restriction when we actually able to cast a spell or not able to cast a spell before attackers are declared. Yep, we already covered like the restrictions, the turn-based restrictions for casting certain spells. Creatures, uh, the uh, creatures, the active player controls attack this turn of fable. So it basically um, forces the creatures to attack each turn of fable. Um, I, I, I know that magic has a lot of things like this. So let's just check if we actually have this. No, we don't. Attack this turn of fable. Uh, this turn of fable. Maybe we're going to find this turn of fable. Seriously? So you tell me we don't have this. Okay, provoke, block a fable. Uh, yeah, we have like this ability is like a provoke. Whenever this creature attacks, you may have target creature defending player controls and tap and block it. Uh, creature must be blocked by two or more creatures if able. This we have. Creature must be blocked. But we don't have anything that works for the attack. Yep, we have only things that works with blocking, but not with attacking. That means that we're definitely going to create something with attacking. Let's do exactly that. So, uh, yep, uh, creatures, uh, the active player controls. We're, not, we're going to get rid of the things here. So creatures, the like creatures, uh, player controls attack this turn if able. So it basically forces the creature to attack. Uh, to attack. We didn't have that before. Good, now we have to do it. Okay, and there's a lot of text here. At the beginning of the next end step, destroy all non wall creatures that player controls that didn't attack this turn. Ignore this effect for each creature the player didn't control continuously since the beginning of the turn. Oh snap. Yeah, we already covered this. I mean, uh, we had something like this, at the like something similar to this. Ignore this effect for... Not, not, not ignore necessarily, but we have this. Like, uh, if creature didn't... Con if, if player didn't control this creature consistently since the beginning of the turn, then we're going to basically ignore a certain, ignore a certain effect. I, be I believe we already had this one, like 100%. Uh, we actually... I believe we actually put it somewhere here. Uh, declared next didn't attack. Destroyed the beginning of the next and step didn't attack. If it is a key card, no. But the beginning of each keep. Do, 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 do. No plans work. Plans work away. This card, yeah. Whenever you dealt damage, sacrifice an token permanent. Felician creator, no. Lost game. Uh, yeah, I will try to find it though. Uh, some of the type of restrictions can be applied. Mm, because I definitely remember we have it. Like the next one, damage that would be dealt prevent this damage. As long as this creature attacking, its power and toughness equal to the two, two, as long as long as long as long. Nope, 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 nope. No, I'm trying to find. Uh, you gain life equal to the damage dealt. Blah 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 blah. blah. Mm, swamp. Uh, each creature in a pile block. Yeah, I'm not necessarily 100% sure if we have it. Let's just put it in here. So, okay. Since I'm not sure, let's just put it in here. At the beginning of the next end step, it doesn't matter what type of step it is, it, at the beginning of certain step, um, or part of the step or phase, uh, destroy all non wall creatures the player controls. It didn't detect this turn, ignore this effect. If please, yeah, didn't control. So, the, the fact that it works with like if opponent didn't control something, then this effect is going to be ignored. It's something that not necessarily we covered. I mean, we covered everything that will perform a certain action if certain conditions are met, but something that not, not necessarily. Yeah, works with ignoring a certain effect we didn't cover. So, or if we covered, we didn't cover it enough to remember it. So, continue. Uh, charge the text of targets or change the text of target spell or permanent by replacing all instances of one color word with another. 
Yeah, we already, I believe we already covered uh, a lot of similar things when we studied unglued and basically unsets because unsets has a lot of things with changing the text and replacing certain instances of one word into with another word. Uh, but right here we're changing a color. Um, I believe we already covered something that works with changing the color. Um, yeah. Yeah. We already covered something that changes the color. 100% sure remembered. Uh, change the text of target spell or permanent by replacing all instances of one color word with another. Example, you may change target black spell to target blue spell. This effect lasts indefinitely. Ew, cool. So the fact that this effect lasts indefinitely kind of cool. Um, so again, it's a permanent effect or temporary effect. Players can't untap more than one creature during their untap steps. Again, um, creates a restriction to how many regular things could be performed. So this is actually a pretty awesome card. Players can can't untap more than one creature during their untap step. This is pretty awesome. Uh, it would be awesome if it was the same for light. <laughs> kind of restricts a lot of actions. Uh, yeah, we have about 20 minutes, less than 20 minutes to the end of the session, uh, this part of the session. Um, yeah, I guess we're going to get to the middle, because it's kind of a little bit faster right now. Whenever a creature dies, you may pay one. If you do, you gain one life. Mm, again, if. No, whenever. Dies, may pay. If you do, you gain life. Covered. Uh, just three different things. Um, Counter target spell that can marry mana cost X, for example, if this spell mana cost is 3 pom pom, X is 5. Yep, it's pretty clear. I mean, yeah, so basically it's a counter that's restricted by. not restricted, but that allows us to choose a certain X and counter a spell with a certain X mana cost. Uh, yeah, I actually remember it somewhere. Yep. I definitely remember it because it was an M14. I might actually have it, but I might I, I, I might not. I don't remember. Players skip their untap step. Yeah, we're not going to cover that because again, it just allows to skip certain part of the turn. We already covered it probably in a couple of previous sessions ago. Uh, the beating of your upkeep sacrifice this one unless you pay one. So, kind of cool. So again, you, you have to pay certain price to keep it in the game. And make sure that this effect will continue. Uh, it's, a good, it's a good way to procrastinate uh, and hold on to the game until you will get more cards. Uh, and uh, then you will not pay, it's going to be sacrificed, and now you have a chance to at least fight against the opponent. Uh, especially if you don't have any cards, for instance, in your hand, and an opponent has seven, you could basically continue to pay a certain price if you have enough lands. Uh, because again, lands are not going to end up either way. Uh, uh, for amount of lands that you control, you can basically drag the game until you will get seven cards and opponent has to discard seven cards because there's going to be a maximum seven it's actually a pretty cool thing to do i mean pretty awesome card stasis um enchanted artifacts you control enchanted artifact again just take control of an artifact a target creature you control with toughness less than this giant power gains flying until end of the turn uh destroy that creature at the beginning of the next 10th step uh, yeah, again, just a certain conditions that uh, has to be met in order for this creature to that creature you control with toughness less than this giant gains flying to, yeah, certain conditions that has to be met in order for to get a creature, to give a creature a flying, or creature has to be a certain power and toughness to gain flying. Yeah, target creature. Pretty cool card, by the way. It's a creature giant. 
destroy that creature at the beginning of the next end step. Yep, that's not that good card because now we have to sacrifice it. <laughs> destroy. Um, it it would be awesome if this creature would be indestructible. I mean, like, if our creature is undestructible and it's it doesn't have flying, for instance, a god. Most of the gods are not doesn't have flying. And uh, for instance, we could get a flying one of our gods, and that way we could attack. Opponent's not going to be able to block it if he or she doesn't have walls or creatures with reach or flying creatures. Um, that way it's not going to be destroyed and it's kind of an awesome combination. So that way discarded awesome, but if it's if this creature is actually going to die, it's not necessarily a good thing. Unless this creature is small. But again, uh, it's 3-4 and most of the gods are pretty big. So it's not going to work for gods. Uh, unless we're going to create this giant bigger and that way we could give flying bigger creatures. Uh, yeah, we're not going to cover it. Pretty interesting ability, but it's just another combination of already existing abilities. I don't see anything new here. Mm, the only new thing that it's a creature who basically are able to get to give another creature flying. Usually uh, spells could do that, but this is a creature. And of course we have to pay a certain price for it. Um, destroy target land, covered. Target player gains X life. Covered. You may spend oh snap. You may spend white mana as through it with red mana. Again, just adapting colors. Okay, continuing, skipping regular basic land. Um blah, 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 blah. exile target creature, its control gains life equal to its power. Exile target creature, it controls gains life equal to its power. <coughs> okay, sorry about that. Bro, sneezed a lot. Sneezed a lot. Ugh. I sneezed out my brain. <laughs> Sometimes it happens. Uh, it's like crazy re a relief from the brain, like goes there through, through the whole body after the sneeze. Oh, so. That's why this card is pretty familiar. Yep, we had it in Battlebound, in Commander, yep, I definitely remember it. Masters of Common 25 and Icon Masters. It didn't have in Conspiracy. It wasn't present in any regular set. It was present in a different type of sets. Oh snap, I remember this card. Yep, I love the art. Art is awesome. Um, Yep, remembered, remembered, definitely remember it. Might even have it. But from where? I didn't buy any conspiracy, I didn't bought any uh, Modern Masters or anything else. I might get this card from Surprise Boosters. <laughs> Which I'm not going to talk about, but still. Or might have it from here, from Iconic Masters, maybe. I don't know. Doesn't matter. I want to see how it looked in from the vault. Oh, the same. Mythic? No, it's not mythic. Uh, continuing. So, yeah, we... Again, just a regular Excite creature. And since it's super cheap, it kind of... Gives this creature's control of life equal to the Exiled card to kind of balance things out. Um, destroy target non artifact, non black creature, it can be regenerated, blah blah blah. Again, destroy a certain non artifact, non black creature, and it can be regenerated. Um, mm, I guess it comes with territory when it comes down with. If you have regeneration and if you will create a card to destroy a certain type of creature and these creatures could possibly have regeneration, you could add it can be regenerated and up the price for this card, the cost. Artifact the Hive, uh, create a 1-1 a one -one colorless, colorless, color, colorless and insect artifact creature token with flying named Wasp. <gasps> Wasp, I wanna watch the new uh, Marvel thing with, I forgot how it's called, the Ant-Man and the Wasp, whatever, Osa in Russian. So yeah, we're not going to cover it, so again, it just creates a insect, just token, re uh, uh, token producer, 
I call them token producer or reproducer. Wait a minute, production and reproduction. Reproduction, it's when you, yep, it's basically the action of process of making a copy of something. But production, it's the actual action of making or manufacturing from components or raw materials. So basically it's just creating from, from, from something. So right here, we tapping, paying mana, we actually producing a color, a colorless creature. And reproducing is basically copying. Uh, to clear things up. Uh, whenever this basilisk, uh, by the way, I wanna hear how it actually called. Basilisk. 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 In Russian it called Vasilisk. And like right here it's B uh, and right here is V. So it's like Vasilisk. But it's actually Basilisk. Uh, basilisk. Cool. Um, yeah, basically it blocks and becomes blocked by a uh, non wall creature, destroy that creature, and at end of combat. Regular thing uh, targets a wall or non wall creatures. Oh, by the way, we even passed the middle and we almost closer to the session, which is actually pretty cool. That means that last week we're probably going to finish with the set, which is awesome. Target spell or permanent becomes blue. Again, just to switch is a target permanent. Uh, color of the target permanent and uh, minus symbols on that permanent remains unchanged. We already covered this, and this set actually has certain like similar things that uh, we added the way that it could change color or when the color of this permanent, the mana symbols of this permanent stay unchanged. Uh, it could uh, pay, it could play a role if we work with devotion to to certain color. That way, we could change the color of this card, of this permanent, but the actual mana symbols are, will stay the same. So we're going to maintain the devotion to certain color, uh, that is the mana symbol of this card. And at the same time, we could have a protection from something that works with this new color, color that we added uh, to this card, which is pretty cool. Uh, whenever a player casts a black spell, you may pay one, if you do, you gain one life. Mm, again, kind of a circumstantial, I mean, uh, whenever a player casts the black spell, if you will play against the black spell deck, or de black, black deck, you may pay one, and if you do, you gain one life, kind of okay. Uh, we already covered bending, again, any creature with bending and up to one without can attack with a in a band, yep, covered it. Uh, time Vault, enter the battlefield tapped, Time Vault is an untapped or an instant tap step, yep, we're, we had something similar in this set. Um, if you would begin your turn while this one is tapped, you may skip that turn instead if you do untap it. Okay, interesting, so uh, in order to untap this thing, we actually have to skip a turn. But the cool thing is, then we could take an extra turn after this one. So, in order to take two turns in a row, we have to skip one of the turns. Tactically, this is actually pretty awesome. I mean, can you imagine? Okay, <laughs> I thought there was no uh, color. Uh, this is actually a pretty cool card. I mean. I would definitely had it. I mean, it's freaking sick. It's cheap. It it allows us to choose how we actually going to skip or not skip turns, and then re-strategize. So basically, this card this card actually allows us to strategize a lot. Like if you create if you, if you build a pretty strategy based oriented deck, it's awesome. Take an extra turn after this one again, just a regular turn thing. Uh, this one is better. <laughs> uh, oh, no, this is actually pretty cheap. Seriously? It costs two? How it's not banned? It may be banned, but come on. You gotta be kidding me. Take an extra turn after this one for two. Um, yeah, we remember uh, certain cards that allowed for the opponent to take an extra turn after this one. But they're definitely not cost two. They cost like at least five. Uh, okay, this is interesting. 
Each player shall. Oh, by the way, I'm not sure that we covered the tech, tech, tech an extra turn thing here. I don't believe that we covered it. Since it's something that it's super familiar. Yeah, no, actually, yep, we covered it. You have the ability to take an extra turn after this one or somewhere you decide during the game. Uh, yeah. Covered. Each player shuffles their hand and the graveyard into their library, then draws seven cards. So again, we already covered these type of cards. They kind of allow us to somewhat restart the game from a different standpoint. Destroy all enchantments, massive destroyer for a certain type of card, destroy all islands, the same. Destroy target wall, it can be regenerated. Again, destroyer can be regenerated. You may tap and untap target artifact, creature, or land. Again, regular tapper slash untapper. Uh, uh, we already covered it. Two handed giant. Woohoo, two handed giant. Uh, can block an additional creature each combat. Covered. We even saw this ability already in our intellectual map today. Uh, enchant creature gets plus one plus uh, plus two plus one a regular buff. Oh, seriously, we, we actually might even finish it if we, if we're actually going to go on the uh, Going to see only simple cards with no complex abilities return target creature to its owner's hand simple going to see only Check the sound Going to go iron sound Regenerate uh, this troll again. Regular regeneration. Whenever you cast an enchantment spell, you may draw a card. Oh, come on! You may have this blah 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 blur. Uh, enter uh, the battlefield as a copy of any creature on the battlefield, except it doesn't copy that creature's color. And it has at the beginning of your upkeep, you may have this creature become a copy of target creature, except it doesn't copy that creatures <laughs> oh this is pretty cool so basically this card copies itself the for the first time when you and when it enters the battlefield and then at the beginning of each upkeep it will copy it and it will copy itself each time this is pretty sick card I mean okay copy that creature enters the battlefield as a copy of any creature i want to put this one in a regular ability and actually not necessarily uh, I, I believe we already have it but one thing that i want to add is okay we have a ship shifter that basically f ship shifter entered the battlefield as a copy of any creature in the battlefield and we have like shape shipper sh shape shifter can be any type of, of card and we have this thing only in shape shifter but what I will add though is we're going to add this one as a frequently used ability. Shh, what? Mm, wait a sec, wait a sec, wait a sec. Why Ship Shifter works there? Oh, because Ship Shifter is not necessarily an ability, it's it's a type of creature. Okay, let's just duplicate it and yeah, let's just not duplicate. Let's just create an additional specification that um, because I I like this thing. I mean, it has because it will allow this creature to recopy itself each turn, which is pretty interesting thing to have. I mean. To inspire the potential of this card, we definitely want to add it into a shapeshifter. Pretty sick shapeshifter. Continuing, as long as this booty guard is untapped, all damage that would be dealt to you uh, by unblocked creatures is dealt to veteran bodyguard instead. Uh, again, just switches again the same, we already covered this. Um, destroy X target mountain, so it basically allows you to destroy uh, X amount of mountains and then deal damage to each creature and each player equal to the number of mountains put into graveyard this way. Um, again, uh, we already covered multiple times something similar that works with basically um, each creature deals damage. A player equal to the 
number of mountains put in there. So it kind of combines the destroying of the mountains, paying an X for it, and X is equal like the two amount of mountains, and then basically deal damage to each creature and each player equal to the mountains that were put on the graveyard. Again, just the three type of combinations we're not going to put it in intellectual mob. Again, a pretty cool double land. Uh, not dual land. Dual lands are allow you to create two mana, generate two mana, but double land is just a land, I guess, that allows you to choose what color to produce. Which, which one color to produce. Defender flying, skipping, defender, regenerate this one. Skipping, defender, regenerate again, defender, buff, defender, defender, defender flying, defender wall, buff, um, defender, enchant creature, the beginning of the upkeep of enchantment creatures controller, this one deals damage to that player. Again, kind of works like a curse, at the beginning of the upkeep of enchanted creatures controller, yep, kind of works like a curse. Trample, regular Elefante, Momo. Um, at the beginning of uh, the keep of enchanted artifacts controller, Wasp deals one damage to that player. Again, artifact that works like hers. Uh, or actually, no, enchant artifact. Yeah, this is again curse that you can put only on an artifact, which is pretty interesting. Uh, but again, we already covered everything similar to that. Debuff, um, enchant creature, target. Yep, regular enchantment and buff that gives a reach to, to a creature. Each player discards their hand and draws seven cards. Somewhat game refresher. I, I will call this. A, I will definitely in the future will call these type of uh, abilities are refresher game refreshers because they basically allows you to get from the this point that you are in the game and kind of refresh the game from the get go. Uh, the same uh, type of abilities that will allow to reshuffle all cards in the graveyards and whatever into library. I guess we're actually going to finish, yeah, we're going to extend a little bit this part of the session, we kind of already have to finish and switch to the Magic Arena, but we, I actually want to finish the set and from the next week we're actually going to start a new one finally, because come on, how many years we're going, or weeks or months we're going to sit on one set. Uh, first strike uh, again we're covered first strike protection from black covered any type of protections okay what the heck is this is it supposed to be a okay I don't believe that this is a type of cloud <laughs> but either way uh, and just the creature has protection from white this effect doesn't remove this one again similar thing white word because of this we have this effect doesn't remove white word because it's assumable that this card is oh wait a minute this is the first thing that actually targets the white and you can't remove it this is the first kind that actually the first card that actually has sense the actual sense in putting this one not as a joke because it named white word but because it gives protection from white yep cool cool cool, cool. whenever enchanted land is tapped for mama 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 mana its controller adds an additional one yeah again cool um by the way it seems like we have similar thing in in right now in uh, In Magic Arena, basically in current sets, in limited, something similar would happen. They have unlimited. Maybe it's not that cheap. It's probably costs two. Okay, fly and regenerate this one. It's keeping as long as this one is untapped, players can't untap when one, one lands during their untap step. Oh yeah! So we had the thing with the creatures. Now we have things with lands. Pretty cool. Cool, cool, cool. Again, skipping it, it just creates restrictions. Whenever a player casts a green spell, you may pay one, if you do, you gain one life, similar to the one that we had with black and different type of colors. Okay, this one is a pretty big one. Uh, look at the target opponent's hand and choose a card from it. Okay, looking, choosing a card from it. You control that player until Word of Command finishes resolving. What? 
The player plays that card if able, while doing so the player can activate mana abilities only if they're from lands that player controls and only if mana they produce is spent to activate other mana abilities of lands the player controls and or to play that card. What? Uh, if the chosen card is cast as a spell, you control the player's well. <laughs> Nope, not now. We are pretty close to finishing this part of the session and we're not going to sit here and try to figure out how to generalize this freaking ability. We're just going to add this one in here and re-analyze uh, it later because come on, man. It's freaking crazy. You gotta be kidding me. It's just too much. No thanks. Destroy all creatures can be regenerated. Yep. Board swipe. Um, and uh, other zombies creatures have swamp walk and other zombies have this one and regenerate this memory. Yeah, we finished finally with this freaking set. Awesome. So from the next session, we're going to start with Arabian Nights, um, uh, which has much less cards than the previous set, which is pretty cool. So this set is going to be relatively fast, I believe. This set is going to be relatively fast. We might even finish Arabian Nights with what, like in one session. In next session, we're going to probably finish Antiqui Antiquids, uh, if I'm probably reading it. So it's pretty sick and cool. Uh, let's see all cards. Mm, hopefully, it actually 79 only, 78. What the heck? What happens? Where are the rest of the cards? Maybe they are removed lands from here because of this. No, we actually have mountains here. It's actually pretty weird that we don't have an actual all cards. Either way, we're going to figure this out later. So yeah, I guess that on that note, we will finish this portion of the session. We're going to see you in a couple of minutes in Magic Arena. I just need to switch the name of the stream. Uh, and basically finish recording because I'm separating those recordings and then uploading them as separate recordings because I can't um, now nowadays record this session like where the second when this the, when the first part of the session in one recording is studying magic and the second is plain studying because like when it's going to upload on YouTube uh, it's not going to work properly so because of this I'm kind of separating those two videos in two and uploading them separately so because of this we need to switch the stream name and whatever so yeah uh, see you in a couple of minutes uh, in magic arena by the way today we f uh, of course uh, give giving away better keys so uh, in the first part of the session we didn't give away anything because there was there was no one to uh, watch us but hopefully in next session uh, the next part of the session we will give away some keys and have some viewers because now we're going to stream magic arena um yeah so yep see you in a couple of minutes and uh huh.